you know, I, I'm accustomed to you just as my sort of uh, co-host yeah. on, on the program, but thanks for hanging out and doing Q&A. Well, I appreciate this, man, because I... You're I'm, bringing them to life. I am, and I'm actually learning something, too. <laughs> I got to tell you, you're like the Bill Cosby of science. <laughs> You know what I mean? Hey, it's Star Talk Radio. You better be careful. You might learn something before it's done. And you see, okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, speaking of learning something, okay, here's John Rowe with a question. All right. And I believe this is from Facebook. Uh, John says, How valid are the assumptions made in the Drake equation? Is it outdated? What would be the equation uh, today? What would it be like, given new parameters with the knowledge of today? And then he says, thanks. <laughs> and here's what i got to say, John. What the hell is the Drake <laughs> equation? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so clearly our questioners are more scientifically literate than you, Chuck. This is true. All right. So, so, for Chuck and others who might not know about the Drake equation, there's a guy named Frank Drake, still alive. He was a big supporter of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And he proposed a way to think about the problem of, is there life, to think about the question, is there intelligent life elsewhere in the galaxy? So he found, he has what's called an equation. It's not really an equation. It's, it's an organizational, it, it's an organizational tool for our ignorance. It's yes. really what it is. Okay. All right. So what do you do? Here's how you do. You start off, you see how many stars in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. It's like several hundred billion. Let's right. pick a number, 400 billion. Okay. What, uh, what fraction of those stars have planets? Okay. It might be, maybe it's half. Okay. Okay. So you take half. All right. And what fraction of the stars with planets have planets that are in the zone around their star where you can sustain liquid water? Right. Because life on Earth, as we know it, requires liquid water. water. You want the planet too close, otherwise your water evaporates. Too far away? It freezes. Right? And you're right just in the right place? Goldilocks is happy. There you go. Okay. So you now, so now you ask, so each one of these is a term in the equation. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's a fraction. It's essentially a fraction. So you have a number of stars in the galaxy. What fraction have planets? What fraction have planets in the habitable zone, the Goldilocks zone? What fraction of those in the Goldilocks zone have life? Mm-hmm. What fraction of planets in the round star in the Goldilocks zone have life that has achieved intelligence? Okay. What fraction of those around the planet in the in the Goldilocks zone has achieved intelligence that has achieved technology? Gotcha. Those are the planets in the galaxy that we might have a conversation with using our radio telescopes. And those are the planets in the galaxy that will one day visit us and make us their pets. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> so, uh, so in, in that equation, over the years, we've we've sent up telescopes, uh, orbiting telescopes, and space-borne telescopes that have gotten that have improved our estimates for what those fractions are. I got. You. And uh, not all of them were equally know, uh, evenly known as each other. Mm -hmm. And the very last one is the, the last couple are, remain uncertain. What fraction of planets have life? What fraction of planets have intelligent life? Right. What fraction of planets with intelligent life have technology? technology. Those are completely unknown, and you, you can just express your bias in what those fractions are. Is right. it 100%? Is it 1%, one tenth of 1%? And so if you do this, even if you take pessimistic numbers, mm -hmm. you, you get huge numbers of planets with technology left over in the galaxy because you start with a, such a large number right, to begin you start with. with a huge number to begin with. A huge number. Right. And so my, my greatest, uh, you know, you know I've been known to, to call out movies if they mess something up that they shouldn't have messed up. Okay. You may have heard about that. I know that. I know that personally. Okay. <laughs> I know that firsthand. In the movie Contact. Right. Which is all about contacting life. Jodie Foster. There's a scene. Matthew where, McConaughey. Where she and Matthew McConaughey, just before their first kiss, mm -hmm. she expresses her passion for the cosmos and says to him, if there were a hundred billion stars in the galaxy, and they move a little closer, and only one in a million of those had planets, they get a little closer, and only one in a million of those with planets had life. And only one of the million of those with life had intelligent life. That still leaves millions of planets to explore. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> you can't divide 100 billion that many times by a million. Right. It doesn't work that way. And the odds of doing that are the same of me kissing Jodie Foster. <laughs> or Jodie Foster kissing any man. <laughs> that's a different show. So true. So... Uh, so that's her. That was the movie's homage to the Drake Equation. Gotcha. They, they didn't happen to get that one right. So in answer to John's question, uh, the Drake Equation is uh, unaffected completely by our technological advances and what we now know about the universe. I'm just saying the last three terms remain completely uncertain. Exactly. Because we've yet to find another planet with life, so we can't do statistics on it. And and clearly, if we don't know one with life, we don't know one with life with civil that's intelligence right. or and with technology. technology. Exactly. Right. So, but but chances are, buddy. Okay, John. Chances are, they're out there. <laughs> okay. Maybe they've already observed Earth and concluded there is no sign of intelligence. <laughs> <life. Okay. laughs>